Listen to this verse and then we'll unpack it. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Now let's remember up front that in the Psalms we are looking at biblical poetry. And so we must read it as poetry. That does not mean that we divorce ourselves of its meaning. But I want to prepare you for metaphor. I want you to be prepared for symbolic language and at the same time to see its root meaning. So let's look at this verse alone. First, he who, let's stop there and I pray you recognize that this is personal. Do you see that this is a promise that is personal? He or she, the issue is that it's individualistic. It's an individual promise that you and I can take with us. Not because some preacher gave you a promise, but because God himself is making a conditional promise in a personal way. He who, he who dwells. Think about that word. What does it mean? We don't use it that often. But I don't think we have trouble understanding it. Dwell is to have some degree of permanence. It's to talk about a settling in, like a default position. He who dwells. Those who are nestled in. Those whose commitment it is to dwell. Now, to understand dwell, we must understand what dwell is not. Dwell is not a quick visit. Dwell is not a flyby. Dwell is not close proximity to. Dwell is not superficial. Dwell speaks to commitment, to placement, to permanence. He says, he who dwells in the shelter, in the shelter. What is a shelter? I immediately go back in my mind's eye to when we first moved to Michigan. Having left the northeast of Massachusetts and Connecticut, Kim and I were in new ground. In my work environment, everywhere I went, I found myself surrounded by tornado shelters. Michigan is quite flat. Every place I went, tornado shelters. And I started asking, I said, what's that? He said, it's a tornado shelter. <laughs> what part of the sign don't you get, Jeff? He said, well, I, I get it. I just don't understand it. He said, oh, that's right. You're from Massachusetts. You're in the land of tornadoes now, kid. I don't think we recognize that we live in the land of tornadoes. God's word has made it clear that we live in the midst of spiritual warfare every minute of every day. And just because in our entire time in Michigan, I never saw a funnel cloud, didn't change the reality that they were all around and that there were people being killed by them regularly. If you go to Ephesians chapter 6, we're told to put on the full armor of God. And if you read that passage carefully, you'll see that it's a perpetual putting on. Literally, if you were to put it into our context, when we go to the grocery store, we should be in the armor. When we get up to go just talk to somebody else in the other room, we ought to have on our armor. We need the shelter. We need to dwell in the shelter. Whose shelter? Do I go to our, our two boys who've made a fort in the backyard? You know, I've got an eight-year-old and a five-year-old, and if they said, hey, Dad, come check out our shelter. This is a cool fort. It might make for a great toy, but it isn't going to protect me when the tornado comes. Whose shelter? He said, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. This is one of the names of God. So he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide, will abide. Here again, notice there's a connection. There's a clause here that says, if this, then that. Now, if you do a flyby, the Most High, if you drop in for a visit of the Most High, if you stay fairly close to the Most High, it does not say that you will abide. But those who dwell in the shelter of the Most High will abide. You say, abide? What is abide? I take you to John 15, where Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. And he says, every true child of God will abide in God. You see, that's where you'll get your sustenance. That's where you'll be fed. All of life will come through the abiding. This is the story of verse 1 of Psalm 91. You will abide in the shadow Say, shadow, isn't that evil? Shadow is bad, right? Nope, you've got to understand the context here. 
We're in the Middle East where the sun not only scorches but kills. And to find a shadow in piercing heat in the midst of a desert is a godsend. It is literally a godsend. So when you abide, you will find the shadow, which is the shelter. You will have protection from the scorching heat. And now again, I ask you to think about it metaphorically. Anybody felt any heat this week? Anybody found that the average everyday life circumstances had a little heat, a little struggle? You feeling some pressure? These are the days we live in. This is the reality of our times. And the promise of God is that he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow. Whose shadow? A puny little shadow? No, the shadow of the Almighty. Here again, another name of God, another distinctive name of God. I promise you, under God's authority and his word, that the degree to which we will surrender our lives to him and then truly dwell, will truly cleave to, we have the promise of God that we will also be empowered to abide in him. We'll be protected by the goodness of the Almighty.